Good morning, Bob. Where are we at? Yeah, we've got another minute. I'll put some music on in a moment. One or two people are just joining us. Very welcome this morning. Good morning, Marianne. Good morning, Irene. Give me more moments and I'll get some music on and as people give people a chance to just join in. Good, good morning, Linda from Grinsby and good morning, Andy. Good morning, Jean from Grinsby. We've got a few Grinsby folk, a few of our own folk. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. Good morning, Emma. Sharing, sharing. Emma sharing it. As we got in. Good morning, Margaret and John. Right, I'm gonna get some music on. Uh, good morning, Florence. Oh, sorry, it's Alan Tony. Florence. <laughs> uh, good morning from Healing. Good morning. Let's get some music on. His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name The sun comes up It's a new day dawn It's time to sing your song Again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. Your rich in love and your slow to anger, your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul would sing your praise unending 
Good start. Just turn that up. I don't need to say. Well, good morning, everyone. A few people like that. That's Matt Redman. A thousand reasons it was called. Bless my soul. Um, really good to be back and welcome to the faith space. This is where, because we can't be in the same place together, we've come together to be in the same time and space on a Sunday morning. We make space for faith together. And because we can't share bread, uh, we are sharing the word of God, which is the one thing which will never pass away. And for those of you that's not been with us before, uh, we are out on tour. We're having a trip. It's nice to get out, isn't it? You know? And we're heading to Turkey, what is modern day Turkey. We before we got to mainland Turkey on Easter morning, we visited the Greek island of Patmos, uh, where we find John, the last of the apostles. He was living in isolation, and we know what that feels like. Well, he was in the vulnerable category, he was in his 80s, and he saw a vision of the risen Christ. And Jesus said to him, You know, tell the world, tell the world, you in isolation and everybody else, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Um, then from there, we've been to Ephesus. Now, Ephesus was a good church. It was busy. It was doing lots of jobs, but it was too busy for love. It had no love. And Jesus said, you know, if you, you can't be a church without love, you can't. And if you've got no love, I'll snuff you out because you've got no place among my churches. We've been to Smyrna. Smyrna was a good church. It was a persecuted church. And Jesus had nothing wrong to say about that church because it was being crushed like the myrrh that was being produced in Smyrna. And we know what it's like to be crushed, don't we? Last week, we went to Pergamos. Pergamos. Um, it, the word Pergamos means an objectionable marriage because they were marrying the word of God with other religions. They were putting them together. And plus, the leadership was ruling it over the people. Uh, the Nicolaitans, remember that? The Nicolaitans, Nike, the, the sports brand. Nike, apparently, I'm not supposed to say brands on here. Anyway, um, but that's what it means. It means victory or power, and it was power over the people. And that was not a good church. That was not a good church either. They're getting worse. You'll probably find this. As we travel through Turkey, the churches are getting a little bit worse. Um, so we're, we're going to get into the word, into the word of God. And we're in the book of Revelation. If you want to follow it at home, it's chapter two. We're going to pick the story up in verse 18. I'll read it to you. You can follow it or just listen. OK, verse 18, Revelation chapter two. To the angel of the church in Thyatira, right. These are the words of the son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, whose feet are like burnishing bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and that you are doing more now than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. 
I've given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on a bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely, unless they repent of their ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am he who searches hearts and minds and will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you in Phyatera, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any more of a burden on you, except to hold on to what you have until I come. To the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. The one will rule them with an iron scepter and dash them into pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my father. I will also give that one the morning star. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. Right. Okay. So we've, we'll pick up this in verse 18. Uh, these are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnishing bronze. What is fire and bronze in the Bible? Because they all represent things. All these things are kind of images. Because it's a very kind of image book, the book of Revelation. Well, fire is the spirit. Uh, that immediately comes to mind. But fire is also sometimes connected with judgment. Uh, you know, the refiner's fire. He refines us in the fire, the silver worker. Um, and bronze is also connected with judgment. You maybe I haven't picked this up before, but each one of these letters begin with a different description of who Jesus is. And each one of the descriptions has something to do with these churches. What's going to happen? What uh, what is being said to the churches? At Ephesus, um, Jesus was described as the one who walked among them with the seven golden lampstands because he's walking among the churches so he's that's the lampstands where the church is at Smyrna it said he was uh, the one who died and came to life again that's how he was described because they were being persecuted to death and they needed to know that Jesus overcomes death that, that was the message they needed to overcome so that was his description at Pergamos he was the one who has a sharp double-edged sword because they turned away from the word of God. And that's what the sword of the Lord is. It's the word of God. And now in Thyatira, he's coming as a judge. This isn't looking good for them from the off, is it really? When you think about it, he's, when Jesus arrives as a judge, then you think, hello. Um, so Thyatira, well, Thyatira was a, a manufacturing town. Uh, most of its people were laborers of some kind, skilled and unskilled. And it was very famous uh, for producing a material with a purple dye. This is what there was, uh, and that was used in royal gowns and so forth. And for those of you that maybe remember, in the book of Acts, Paul the Apostle came across a woman called Lydia, and she was the seller of purple from a city called Thyatira. And, but she worshipped God, and the whole family was baptised. Lydia and her whole household was baptised into the faith. And that's one of the proof texts we get for baptizing babies, because actually on the say so of the head of the house, everybody's baptized in in the name. So it's not so much a believer's baptism, but as a whole. So that's one of the proof texts is what we use. The challenge that was going on in Fiatera was that they had something called trade guilds. And um, it was a little bit like belonging to a, a trade union today, a little bit, I'll say. Um, to be part of a trade guild, you had to worship the god of that trade. Uh, so if you was a goldsmith, you worship the god of gold. If you was a silversmith, you worship the god of silver, and so on. You get the idea. Um, you could not be part of a trade guild without false worship. And in other words, you couldn't have a job without false worship. And this placed the Christians in a very, very tough spot. And Jesus says to them, uh, you have love, faith, service and perseverance. You're hanging in there. You're hanging in there. So it kind of sounds like a good church. And uh, there's quite a bit. There's quite a bit there. There's some good stuff. Perseverance, uh, service. 
love and faith. So they've they've got they've got their heads up over Ephesus for a start. But he says, nevertheless, I have this against you. Here it comes. Here's the bad stuff. You are tolerating that woman Jezebel. <sighs> Most people uh, today. If they had a baby girl, the first name that pops into their head is not Jezebel. Um, right, well, at least when my girls were born, uh, it wasn't even on my radar. I didn't look through the book and think, hmm, Jezebel, now that's got a ring to it, hasn't it? <laughs> no, it, just, it didn't happen. Um, Jezebel was married to Hayab, and out of all the kings and queens of Israel, we're going back well into the Old Testament now, um, they were the most corrupt, immoral, false worshippers in history. They they rank among them. The prophet Elijah, now this is where we're going from, Elijah, he had a few, quite a few showdowns with Jezebel. And some of you remember that great uh, showdown he had with the prophets of Baal, where he defeated all those uh, prophets. Uh, then Jezebel got to hear about it, which is right, I'm having him. And Elijah was like, mm, it's Jezebel, I'm off. So he's at, even Elijah backed off from Jezebel. So most biblical scholars agree that here in the church at Thyatira, there would not be a literal person called Jezebel. It just, no one would use that name because it's so synonymous with bad stuff. It's a bit like calling your kid Adolf Hitler today. You just wouldn't do it. It wouldn't happen. Um, so what's going on in this church? They are tolerating Jezebel. It's another way of saying they are compromising with idolatry false worship and some immorality as well. Uh, and the cure? Well, to those who have been faithful, Jesus says, hang on in there. Hang on in there until the end, until the end. So that means that there'll always be a church there until his return for eternity. There'll always be a church there till the end of time. Um, but to those who have already given over to Jezebel, uh, this letter is very challenging because God kind of writes them off. Uh, he says, You've gone too far. You've you've gone over the edge. There's no return for you. And that's you don't hear that very often because God is the God of second chances and third chances and fourth chance. You know, God gives us chances over and over. Well, he has me. So um, and I, you know, I'm always thankful for that. And I'm sure some of you are. But actually, this God's saying here is you've gone too far. There's no coming back from this. They were materialistic people they place their work before their faith jezebel taught them to join the trade guilds which led to false worship so the question that we might ask today is does your is your work more important than your faith do you trust more in your ability to provide than god's ability to provide jezebel was telling the people of the church of Thyatira that they could still be Christians and worship the gods of the trade guilds and it would be okay. They tolerated for her false teachings. Jesus said, this is a problem. This is a problem. They were worshiping in a twofold way. Uh, synchronism is called, it's uh, now, this is a problem. Idolatry uh, comes in many forms. Uh, it might be for us today, materialism. And I think probably that is the biggest idolatry of our time. Um, where things of this world are more important than the things of eternity. And there's also a tendency in today's society to go along with the notion that all roads lead to God. You hear that, don't you? Well, you know, you know, it's okay. Everything leads to God. It's the same God, so forth. But Jesus said in John, I am the way. No one comes to God but through me. I am the way, the truth and the life. This church was a tolerant church, but Jesus says, there are things I will not tolerate. Tolerant. And we hear this, don't we? It's a bit of a buzzword, isn't it? Um, we hear politicians and leaders say, oh, you know, we need to be tolerant. Uh, tolerant. That's good. Tolerant. It's not a good word, actually, tolerance, when you think about it. Um, tolerance is not a high standard. Um, Jesus never said, in the Beatitudes, he never said, blessed are the tolerant. Um, let me put it this way. I tolerate my wife. No, hang on. Um, maybe, no, maybe it should be she tolerates me. That's probably better. Yeah. Um, 
And I'll tell you why. Because the dictionary says, this is the definition of tolerance in the dictionary. It means to bear something unpleasant or annoying. Yeah, she probably tolerates me, actually, uh, when you think about it. Um, in some ways, I'm an intolerant person. I will not tolerate racism. I will not tolerate bigotry. I will not tolerate a lot of evil things. And God says he will not tolerate idolatry in his church in whatever form it comes. Jesus says to the church at Thyatira, and he's saying it to us, we need to hold faith and be faithful to the one true God. And for those that do, verse 28, I will give them the morning star. Who is the morning star? Well, uh, Revelation tells us in chapter 22, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Our promise is that he will give us himself for those who have hold firm. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen to that. We're going to pray together. Uh, we always finish with a prayer, don't we? The Lord's Prayer, uh, if you say it with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Um, well, uh, don't forget, Pam is live with the Daily Office each morning at 8.30 between uh, Monday to Thursday. Um, Fought for the Day is on live on the Laceby site, but I think it does go over onto this one on Thursday morning. Fought for the Day at 10. Um, I think we're going to hear from... Pat, this week, I think Emma's going to relay uh, a thought from the day from Pat. I think that's the idea. We had a rather good one from Dennis. It was nice to see Dennis uh, last week. So, and then we'll be back with the face with. This is the seventh Sunday I've done this. Uh, we are halfway through the churches in modern day Turkey. Um, maybe we're halfway through this lockdown. I don't know. It'd be nice to think that, wouldn't it? Um, we're going to go, we're going further south to the church at Sardis. It gets worse. It gets worse. I'll tell you, there are, it's another messed up church. Don't worry. We're all, we're all a bit messed up, aren't we? And, but Jesus walks among us. I pray that when we get back to our churches, um, we won't tolerate a lot of things. We'll be intolerant in some ways. Uh, and we won't tolerate, we won't tolerate idolatry and we won't tolerate a lot of prejudices either uh, or anything like that. So let's let's pray for that. Yeah. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. That's it. It's the only path we need to take. God bless you all. Please stay safe and I'll see you all soon. Have a good day.